Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite soy dev, Gardner. Today we're going to talk about some more web development because you guys seem to really like the last video, uh, or the last two videos. And um, yeah, web development is one of my favorite things, so let's talk about it. Today uh, we're going to talk about CSS uh, and how selectors work. Now, if you're not familiar with the web, the web is comprised of three main things. Uh, first, you have your HTML, which is a markup language for documents. And what you're seeing here is HTML. We have our, our head where we specify like metadata for the document, as well as links to uh, items that we need for our stuff. And then we have our body here. And this is gonna have our header, which is uh, this list of uh, links to navigate around. And then we have our main uh, tag with an article in it, as well as a section. And then we have a footer tag. And you can see here that this is uh, the browser's representation of this document. The second part of the web is going to be JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript or you know WebAssembly, some kind of logic that's built into your uh, browser that your browser can execute. Uh, we're not going to talk about JavaScript because we don't need it in this video. Uh, the final thing that we need is styles. So cascading style sheets, CSS. Now this CSS is empty because we're going to fill it out together here. Uh, and what CSS allows you to do is basically write queries um, for uh, your HTML document that will be able to then apply uh, styling to those uh, queries that you have. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's, let's start with um, style.css. Now you can see we're linking style.css here in our head. We have link, rel equals style sheet, and href is style.css. Um, and that's necessary if you want to have your style uh, document included. Now you can do inline styling with a style tag. Wow, I can't type. So if you have a style tag in your document, you can write CSS in line here, uh, but it's, it's cleaner and uh, nicer to do it with, a, uh, with an external file. Now I wanted to uh, make an unordered list here. So we're gonna do li and then we're gonna go item one and then let's do item two. And now this is gonna be necessary because uh, I wanna show you guys a couple things. So we have our unordered list here and that's right here. And you can see that uh, our navigation bar is actually an unordered list as well with these bullet points. You could do an ordered list, which would uh, prepend your list items with numbers. Um, you can also do letters, you can do whatever. Um, but let's go ahead and select our navigation UL. Now, you, now, if you know anything about CSS already, you'll know that you can target items uh, by listing their name here. So we, we have our selector is what this is called. And then we're going to have a list of properties inside these brackets. Uh, and so UL is a tag name. So we're going to be matching any tag name um, UL. That's what this selector here uh, states. And we can say, get rid of the um, margins here. So let's say margin zero. And let's refresh the page. And you can see that the margins were removed. We can also do padding. And padding is going to be a, a bit more of a significant thing. But I said we wanted to target our navigation UL. So one of the nice things about uh, selectors in, in CSS is that you can actually compound them. So you can do nav space UL. And what that will do is it will find any unordered list that is contained within a uh, nav tag. So this one and this one, right? So now if we save this and we refresh, you'll notice that this unordered list won't be affected by what we have done here. So if we refresh, boom, look at that. And again, we can do, we can target the list items in the UL here. So we can say UL and we can say display inline. And what that's gonna do is it's going to uh, make them display in a line rather than breaking uh, to new lines. And there we go, you can see we have home, other page, and now it starts to look more like a traditional navigation panel, doesn't it? But you can see, <laughs> we also updated uh, this down here. We don't wanna update this list. So uh, let's 
prepend this with a nav. And you can see, even though uh, list item is two layers down uh, from the nav uh, element, these list items are still contained within a nav element. And so that selector matches. Cool. We've, we've, we're starting to figure this out. I, I hope you're following along. Uh, you know, I'm trying to explain this in a, in a relatively straightforward way. So let's scroll down a little. Uh, you can see that we have an image tag and this image tag is represented here under heading two in the paragraph, right? Or, or the P tag. So let's say that we want to have our uh, image tags float on, around the text and have the text wrap around the image. Uh, so what we could do is we could say image and then we could say float left. Um, and if we hit refresh, you can see, hey, we're, we're floating left. And uh, that's that looks great, except uh, we want to add a little bit of spacing here. So let's go ahead and add margin. We can just specify one rem, which is a relative uh, unit. And so you can see that we have the space now around our um, image, but we're also affecting this image down here. So let's instead look at our HTML. Uh, how do we want to select this image? We could say any image that's part of an article, we want to float left and have a margin of one rem. And now if we refresh the page, this is not going to change, but this will. Watch. Boop. You see that? That's pretty cool. So far, we've just been um, selecting tag names, which is fine if you want to do that. I mean, there's, there's many valid reasons that you would want to do something like that. But you can see here that we have class, uh, article title, right? And you can also have things like IDs, CSS selector. Uh, and there's all kinds of different things. Like we could have like an ID of list, right? And you can actually uh, query for those things. Now, the way you would query for a class is with a dot. So let's say dot article title. And now uh, whatever properties here are going to be applied to this H1 tag here. So we could say uh, font size is 2 rem. There you go. So you see we've increased the size of uh, our, our art article title here. You're able to apply styles by querying for them for, by, based on their class name. So let's go over here and let's add a class. Let's add a class. Uh, and you can have multiple classes separated by spaces in your HTML. So let's say uh, article, um, just give it a, a, a class of content, all right? And then let's go down here to section and let's also add a class content, okay? Now, what we could do is we could say content and we could say uh, width and we're gonna say 70%. And then we can say margin zero auto. And what this is going to do is this is going to uh, make the, this all, the, all this content here 70% uh, the width of its parent. Uh, in this case, the width of its parent is going to be the, the viewport uh, or the browser window. And then we're going to set the left and right margins uh, to be automatic. So it's going to center itself inside the viewport. So if we refresh the page, you can see that we, we've done that, right? But... We don't want to actually target this. Let's say that, let's say for some reason we don't want to target uh, another paragraph of text. This time it's in English, which is right here. So what we can do is we can actually select for content that is uh, uh, part of an article tag. So let's say article dot content. And so that's going to select uh, for an article tag with the, a class of content. And you can see now this text is not uh, being uh, centered or, or resized. And that's what we were trying to do. Let's say that we want to have our section dot content to be text aligned center. And so now you'll see that this text is actually being center aligned. And finally, let's center align uh, the footer logo here. So let's just say footer. And then we can say uh, text align center and whoops, center, center. There we go. 
and we'll hit refresh. And now you can see uh, that image tags are actually kind of behave like text. They're inline elements, uh, which means that um, you can do something like text align center and it will, you know, center align it to the parent width. So there we go. We, we have uh, a document that's starting to actually look kind of pretty uh, compared to how it did look. Uh, we've got a little bit of, um, you know, margins here and we can actually, uh, it'll resize dynamically based on the width of our uh, window. Um, and we have our image floating here uh, and text is wrapping around the image. And we have, you know, our anchor tags. One more thing that I wanted to talk about is that you can actually have multiple classes on an item. So let's give article another uh, class and we'll just say uh, this is going to be body content. And you can see that if we refresh the page, nothing's going to change because uh, classes are delimited by spaces. So like basically you can think of uh, content and body content as two separate entries in the article's classes, right? So there are two separate classes here. Now you can actually do uh, different things in your CSS. You can say uh, body content is going to equal, uh, let's say font weight bold. And now if we refresh the page, everything's gonna be bold. We're, we're targeting, uh, article.content and dot body content separately, but they're both being applied to the same element because they match the queries. And, and this is where CSS can become a little bit tricky because you see we also have an ID uh, of class selector here. So let's get rid of this because this is kind of ugly. Um, and we'll refresh the page. Now let's say that we want to do CSS selector. Now, what does that hash mark mean? The hash is actually um, targeting an ID rather than a, you know, a dot for a class. And if we were to say width um, 50% and we leave margin and uh, margin zero auto, and we refresh the page, you'll see that the CSS selector or the ID selector here is actually overriding the article.content above. And it doesn't matter where we place this. If we paste that in here, you can see that it's still taking precedence um, because an ID selector uh, is actually going to have higher priority. It's more specific um, than an article.content or even a dot .content would be. Um, and, and that's something that we should talk about. Uh, if we say just dot content and we say um, width is 100% and we were to like, you know, make this go away for a moment, you'll see that the article dot content is more specific than dot content. And so because article dot content is more specific, it's going to apply its styles, right? Um, and again, if we uncomment that and we refresh the page, the ID tag is the most specific and then article.content is the next most specific and then content is, it's, is the last, uh, the least specific. Specificity is really tricky in CSS sometimes. Um, and generally specificity of equal value is going to flow from the top of the document down. So things that are further down in the document, if it has the same specificity, uh, the, the further down it is in the document, the higher, uh, the, the greater the priority is going to be basically. So let's say that you have um, two, let's just um, do that. We're gonna, we're gonna disable this and you can see that content width is gonna be 100%. But now if we go down here and we do content width uh, 50%, you can see that this uh, these properties are gonna be applied here, okay? Because it's further down in the document. Now, you know, and we can go back to doing, um, if we go up here and type in article, then you can see that it's going to do 70% or 100%, I'm sorry. Uh, so specificity is a little bit tricky. It usually goes from top to bottom. So the further down in the document, 
uh, the the query is, the higher the priority is going to be um, for equal uh, selectors. And then um, IDs are more specific than classes, and classes are more specific than tags, which you can see right here. I think that's going to do it for uh, this CSS video. Uh, we're going to do a bunch more stuff. We're going to get into some really interesting uh, types of CSS selectors uh, and how you can actually combine uh, selectors and like query for children items or for uh, uh, siblings. Oh, we're going to get into it. This is going to be really cool. But that's going to do it for now. I, I wanted to say thanks to Systrum for supporting the show over on uh, on YouTube memberships. Uh, without people supporting this show, I wouldn't be able to dedicate as much time as I can to this channel. And I want to say thank you for that. Um, that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you share this video if you found it useful. And I'll see you guys in the next one.